Okay, I got the chat pulled up now. <clears throat> this is uh, rose water, which is like so amazing for your complexion. Gonna use the primer. Apply your moisturizer. Hey Google, play Bollywood music. I would just come on here live today and just hang out for a little bit while I do my face and see what's new with you all and see what's going on. Google. Skip. You guys, I have this like Google home that I got from my dad for uh, Yule and it's growing on me, you know? And I know people say like, girl, the government, it's like listening to you and like, you gotta be careful and it's always recording everything you say and it's tracking your location and all that. Okay, you think if the government really wanted anything to do with me, they couldn't access that all that information through my cell phone though? You know? Like our cell phones have microphones, our cell phones have all that information. Video camera, microphone, a GPS, I mean, if people really wanted to track me, I'm sure they could. I'm sure they could. I 
That's my opinion on that. This um, foundation that I'm using is by Collab, and it's called Beige Sand. It's the color that I'm using, and um, I would say it's more like medium coverage, but it is super buildable. And I'm a full coverage kind of chick, so. Elisa Radio. Sure, check out this Elisa Radio mix on Google Play Music. Hey Carol, what's going on? What is going on? Do a little bit of light baking. Okay, Carol. I'm good. Thanks for asking. Can you hear me okay over the music? I don't know if the music is too loud or not loud enough. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. I'm doing good. I just, you know, I decided to hop on here today while I do like a little get ready look. Oh, you took your boys to the farm today and to a friend's house? That's cool. Is the farm like a family farm or? Alright, we're 
we're just gonna let that bake for a minute. Where is the National Museum of Rural Life? Where is that at? Oh, I'm gonna move my chair over a little bit. Hey Google, turn the volume off. Hey Google, turn the volume up to 55%. Hey Google, turn the volume down to 45%. Okay, I wasn't sure if you could hear me or not. Glasgow, Scotland, okay. Scotland's on my bucket list of places I definitely, definitely, definitely want to go to. I'm telling you guys, witchcraft is totally, uh, or makeup is like totally witchcraft, you know? How they have like, they used to talk about, you know, lipstick being like, demonic and evil because it could uh, seduce a man into like wanting to marry a woman. Okay, contour is like that of the 21st century. Because you can completely change your face with a little bit of contour. And you guys, this is going to look really harsh when I first put it on, but we're going to blend it out. Yeah, Scotland's somewhere I've always wanted to go, Carol. Scotland and Ireland both. I would be happy to go to either. There's a lot of really cool historic castles out that way I would love to go see. Definitely on my bucket list of places I want to go. Get us a little bit of blush because if you're luminescent like me, uh, you might not want to look dead. I know that's some people's thing, you know, to look a little dead, but that's not that's not my thing, huh? So what's up with all you guys? What's new? What's going on? Make sure y'all to bring this down your neck, okay? There are so many people who don't, and I just, it looks crazy when you have that hard line, you know?
Okay. Let's move on to eyes. All right, I'm looking at the chat. Okay, look up Danino, Den, and St. Andrews. Okay, I'm looking that up right now. Oh, wow. So what is this, Carol? Danino Den? It is so great. Okay, so it's a ritual site. Danino is a small inland village in East Newark of Fife, resting on a road between St. Andrews and a quiet little settlement, mysterious ancient site in Scotland with enigmatic faces. That is so cool. Okay, I'm leaving this tab open because I'm gonna have to look at that later. That is really dope. Let's go, Carol, let's go. Use a brow powder on my eyebrows. I do. We use a brow powder. See what a difference that makes? Like it's still pretty subtle, but it makes a really big difference. Makes a big difference. So the brows look really crazy right now because they're so dark in my face. It's so contrasting. But when we build upon these eyes, the brows will match the rest. And I'm gonna put a little lip balm or something on my lips. This is called Touch of Spice. I think I'm gonna do a more neutral, lippy, since I'm doing dramatic eyes today. And you guys, I do not sell makeup. I do not sell makeup. I'm not sponsored with Unique. I am not sponsored with uh, any, any, any brands. So if I make any suggestions about makeup, that's just totally my own opinion and not um, not uh, any sponsorships or me trying to sell any type of any type of makeup. All right. Yes, Carol. Yes, actually. Yes, I'm. I have a few festivals lined up that I'm going to this year, um, and I have big plans for Lamas. Big, big plans for Lamas. So, let's see. It's July. Okay. So that first week of August, um, I'm actually going with the circle that I'm in and we're going on a Lamas like witchy retreat together and we're going to be spending um, a weekend down in Brown County um, and we've got our Airbnb booked and our Airbnb, it's, it's phenomenal. We get like 
a free continental breakfast and we're doing a wine tasting down there and our Airbnb sits on 30 acres of um, agri like rural land which I'm really excited about and it's about 20 minutes from Brown County so we'll be staying Friday Saturday Sunday and then we'll be home on Monday it's it's really cool Brown County is uh, I mean they call it like the little smokies because it's like hilly it's not quite like mountainous but it's hilly and they have a lot they have a really cool strip and artist strip down there where you can buy like really cool handmade stuff like rugs and tapestries and they have a bunch of really cool witchy stores and crystal shops and um, some of the girls in the circle haven't before so I'm really I'm really excited for them to see it um, but yeah it should be really nice and we'll be there uh, over Lamas so we'll be celebrating that as well um, and then at the end of August, I'm actually going to be going to St. Louis for a weekend. So I will be in St. Louis. I'm hoping to um, go up in the arch at St. Louis. Even though I'm terrified of heights, I've never done that before. Gone up into the arch. I don't know if you can still go into the arch or what, but I'm hoping I'll be able to get in there. So we'll be there for a weekend. And then in September, my birthday month, I will be at the Indianapolis Pagan Pride Day Festival with my Third Eye Fortunes biz. And I'm actually going to be sponsoring some local artists. So there'll be some locally made um, paintings down there. One of the artists has made a chakra collection all the way from root to crown and um, artistically designed the mandalas to kind of correspond to the seven chakras. And so that'll be really cool. Um, that'll be really cool, I think. And I might be also sponsoring another local psychic. I run a local like witchy and pagan group for the state of Indiana and I put out a post saying that I was looking you know I have an opportunity for someone if they would like to work at my booth here's what I'm looking for and um, I told them that I would properly compensate them for their time so I'm already doing um, palm readings, tarot readings, cardamancy, and oracle readings um, at the festivals. I'm not doing mediumship, um, and I'm also not doing natal charts. The reason for that is because at, when you're at a festival, you know, you want to really be focused on time management because you're going to have a high volume of clients who are going to want services, kind of like at a psychic fair. And for me, and you know, it's funny because my friend, my friend Sydney says this too, natal charts are like the pre-calculus of astrology. And so I go, I'm a talker, I go like this. So it's hard for me to, to keep it short, cute, and to the point when I'm doing a natal chart reading because I just go on and on. You know, you have your planets, the signs, the rising, you know, the sun, the moon, what what's going on in your Mars house, what's going on in your Venus house, your ascending. It, it, it's just, I know that I would not be good at um, the time management aspect of that, so I'm not gonna offer that. I do offer that from Third Eye Fortunes, but I'm, I'm not gonna be doing that. Um, I'm not gonna be offering the natal charts at the actual tent but they can sign up for that and come see me for that outside of festival time but yeah all the services are going to be heavily heavily discounted like I'm talking like 75% off like a five dollar palm reading so that'll be really exciting and then um, I got brand new business cards made 
which is pretty cool. I got those commissioned from one of my lovely, lovely, beautiful, talented, wonderful friends who's a graphic designer and is just the cat's meow, darling. And um, I'm also having pamphlets that I'll be handing out. Oh, I haven't even been paying attention to the chat. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, are you talking about a pagan pride day in Scotland, Carol? Is that what you're talking about? Because I would think that, like, Scotland would definitely have a pagan pride day festival. Carol, what time is it in Scotland? You guys are ahead of us, aren't you? I think you guys are ahead of us. I am obsessed with this bronze eyeshadow, guys. And I'm almost out. Now, I know some of you are probably like, why are you putting this liquid foundation on your under eyes when you've already baked that? That makes no sense. Okay, here's the reason. I'm a sloppy bitch when I do my eyes, and I get tons of fallout, and I don't trust myself with my eyeliner nor my mascara. So I like to have a little safety net, and if I mess anything up, it can just get blended out. Okay, Carol, number one, I would Google Pagan Pride Day Festival, like Scotland or, you know, for your city, the city that you're in. And if you Google that, I just had to get that a little bit out of my eyes. I'm about to do my eyeliner. If you Google uh, Pagan Pride Day Festival, you know, in your city and nothing comes up, try the cities surrounding you because... I would be surprised if Scotland had nothing at all. I would be very surprised. And I'm going to be lining my eyes first with just some black eyeshadow. And this, oh my gosh, I'm getting messages. It's, oh, it's always when I'm Facebook, it's always when I'm live. Facebook live, YouTube live, something. So I'm gonna take this black powder and I'm gonna line my eyes with this powder and then I'm gonna go over it with the gel. And I'm lining it with the powder first because that way it'll kind of give me a guideline of where to take my gel. And it also will create more of that smoky, sultry kind of look. And remember guys, makeup is like witchcraft. It's like a glamour spell for your face. And you can completely change around how you want to appear. Do you want to be you know, darker and mysterious? Do you want to be young and youthful? Do you want to be sensual and sultry? You get to decide, you know, do you want to channel um, different elemental energies? Do you want to incorporate, you know, reds and blushes and pinks and corally shades? 
or do you want to use, you know, golds and bronzes or blues and turquoise and greens? Like, you get to decide and you get to incorporate whatever elements you want, you know? Depending on the day, like, I will even use runes with my concealer and then blend those runes out and push that intention into my spell. I'm gonna have to be a little quiet when I'm doing my eyeliner, guys. Thank you, Carol. So that's what it's gonna look like when you kind of smoke it. But we're gonna go over it with gel and intensify it. And this is a very, I would call this a very, um, honestly, this is, I don't know. <laughs> this is kind of how I do my makeup on a regular basis, I guess. Okay, so now we have our powders that line our eyes, and you could totally keep it with just like how these eyes are. You could keep that just lined with powder if you wanted to. Um, it will sit on your face all right because, you know, we primed our whole face, so it's going to all stick. It's not going to come off. It's not going to you know, get all flaky and stuff, and we could blend this out and put on some mascara and rock that. I'm not doing that today, but you could totally just wear it just like that if you wanted to. I'm gonna take my cold liner and work it out. I'm going to take my coal and basically go over what we just did around my eyes. We're just gonna go over that with the coal. Okay, so you can kind of tell the difference between the coal liner and just the powder. The coal is going to be a little bit more intense. A little bit more intense. And I will be blending all this out, guys, okay? We are gonna be blending that out, honey. You know, something else while I'm doing this I'm thinking about is how ancient eyeliner is. I mean, think about, you know, the Egyptians and their beauty practices. How, you know, makeup was such an integral part of a lot of the pharaohs' lives and status, worn by men and women alike, you know? I think that's very interesting. 
All right, so now we have outlined the eyes with the coal. Also, a really good place to get cold liner, um, there's actually a vlogger uh, here on YouTube. Her name is Angelara. Hands down, one of my favorite YouTubers, um, Angelara. A-N-D-U-L-A-R-I-A-H, I believe, Angelara of Earth. And she actually makes her own uh, cold liner, which you can buy. Uh, once again, I'm not sponsored. I'm just letting you know products that I like. Um, her coal liner, it is a little bit, I feel like, on the higher side when it comes to price. However, it the price matches the quality. I will say that. And it lasts a long time. And I know that Angelara, she has a few videos that she's made using her coal liner. And, you know, she uses it on her eyes as well as her brows. Um, I prefer powder on my brows personally. You know, Angelara looks great with her with her coal on both, but I prefer um, powder on my brows. Um, and I, I love the coal liner. I love it. Let's get these lashes curled. Let's get some mascara on. Let's get these lashes curled. Hun. I don't know if you guys are like me in this sense, but I got a couple of you watching, so you must be, but I'm super addicted to get ready with me videos. Like, I don't know what it is that's so satisfying about watching someone beat their face, but it's very satisfying. All right, so the mascara that I'm gonna be using is called Monster Lash, and you can pick this up at Sally's Beauty Supply. This will run you maybe about eight bucks. It has a beveled wand, which is nice because it'll help kind of push your lashes up a little bit more. And I have very thick eyelashes, but they're very short. And this is the Monster Lash XXL. So it's a volumizer and lash extender, but I'm not really gonna be rocking my natural lashes today. We're going to be putting on some falsies. So I'm putting on this mascara to help my falsies stay in place where they're supposed to be. And also if you put mascara on your lashes and then put your falsies on, it'll keep um, you know, your lashes blended in with the falsies and keep it looking a little bit more natural. And we're not gonna go too heavy on the bottom lashes right now because we still need to blend all of that out. So we don't wanna go too heavy on that. <clears throat> Let that dry a little bit. Hey Google, skip. Okay. <laughs> I'm being silly, I'm sorry. Oh, here's another product um, that I have recently gotten that I am loving. It is the Snitz brand, and you should be able to pick this up at most grocery stores. Um, this is the All Natural Deodorant. And the one that I have is the Lavender Sage, which I really like, but next time I think I'm gonna get the rose one. The Lavender Sage, when I smelt it in the store, it smells a lot like lavender. Like it smelled mostly of lavender with like a featuring of sage, which I really dig that. Um, but I guess on me, you know, and everyone's chemistry is different, but on me, it smells more just like sage, which like, 
don't get me wrong, I definitely appreciate the smell of sage. It has grown on me throughout the years. At first I hated it. I thought it smelled like shitty weed and BO, but it's kind of grown on me. But I also, like, I personally don't want to smell like that all day, you know? So they also have, I think, like a lemon minty one and then like a rose, like sandalwood maybe. Um, so I think I'm gonna try the rose one next. I'll let you guys know how I feel about that. The Smith's deodorant does have mixed reviews. Some people have complained about it like clogging their pores and having some skin issues or even rashes. So if you have sensitive skin, proceed with caution. I have sensitive skin, I haven't had any issues with this. I have not had any rashes, no pustules, nothing. So I've been okay. Um, and this is not an antiperspirant. It's an all natural deodorant. It has no aluminum in it, no artificial fragrance in it. Uh, no glycerin in it and it's not an antiperspirant so you're still gonna sweat which is which is what your body is supposed to do anyway antiperspirants clog your pores up and keep you from perspiring which for me i that is not good for me that does not work for me i have had skin issues in the past with antiperspirants so we're not gonna do that but the concern i have about the rose one is that the deodorant itself is colored it's like a brownish kind of color versus and i don't know about the lemon mint one but the lavender sage is like a white kind of oh, sorry guys put this back. um the lavender sage is pretty clear um so anyway I've, I've rambled about deodorant now for like four minutes. But it's my new favorite thing. My new favorite retail purchase, okay? Okay, where are my lashes? Let's get to the lashes. what I do with them? Um, here's another product shout out <clears throat> on Amazon. You can actually get a whole box of five different assorted lashes. And I want to say I got these for like $9.99 maybe. So they have, and these all come in one big box, all these sets. These are some pretty full, dramatic lashes that you get in the set. These are some long, not as full lashes, more like the Twiggy lashes, the Twiggy style lashes, so if you're into that. These are called Wispies. Wispies are gonna look the most natural. These look really crazy on the package, but I promise they look super natural on. And then these are kind of a combination of the dramatic lashes and the Wispies. So they're like dramatic natural. But you can get all of those for like, I think it was like $8.99 maybe on Amazon. And let me see if I have the box to tell you what the exact brand is. Oh, I think I actually threw the box away. Damn, sorry guys. <coughs> okay. So let me take a look back at these comments. Sorry, I feel like I've been neglecting you guys. and have yellow orange candles for llamas. What are you gonna be baking and cooking? What are you gonna be making? Are you doing some kitchen witchery? I'm using the duo glue and clear. Once again, cause I'm super messy and the black eyelash glue, it's not good for me. So I use the clear. I feel like the black, like when it dries, it definitely makes your lashes look a little bit fuller, but like if you get it anywhere other than where it's supposed to be, it just looks crazy. And the clear is a little shinier, I feel like, than the black is. So sometimes I have to go over, um, sometimes I have to kind of go over the, uh, where the glue is with some, with some eyeliner, excuse me. I'm using my tweezers. Aren't these cute? 
I got like a, uh, I have like a little set of them. They kind of reminded me of the uh, old Bratz dolls. And you guys, you can wear these eyelashes. Like, I would say if you wear them most days like I do, like this set I have worn twice already. This will be the third time. And honestly, I think they actually look the best on the second and third day of wear. I would not wear the same set any more than four days. And also, um, after that four day mark, you can actually take them and take a toothbrush and like some makeup remover and scrub out all the makeup and reuse them like another four days. But after that, pitch them, pitch them. And also when you put your glue, I, I've heard a lot of people talk about, oh, I can't do falsies or, you know, I can't get them, to, I can't get them on. Or when you're doing your falsies, you want to put a thin bit of glue on there and then you want to let it sit and you want to wait until that glue gets a little tacky. So don't just put the glue on and then stick it right on because the lash is going to be sliding around on your face and the glue is not going to be tacky enough to hold it in place. And when you put it on, put it in from like the middle and then smooth out both the sides. And I've already worn these lashes, so I know how they fit my face. But if you, if you have a new pair of lashes or you're trying a new brand, before you even put the glue on, hold the lash up to your eye and see how it fits because not everyone has the same, you know, length or width dimensions of eyes. And a lot of brands are gonna make their bands longer than potentially needed because uh, you can always snip the bands and cut them to more fit your eye shape versus if the band is too short or kind of out of luck unless you only want to wear like a half C's which can look kind of cute too just depending on what you're doing okay And then once, <clears throat> once you have the lash on, you can tell it really just pops the eye. Once you have the lash on, you can take, uh, you know, your tweezers that you're using, which I don't care for the applicators that they provide. So I use my tweezers. You can take the tweezers and like a hand mirror and pinch kind of your lashes and the falsy together. Okay, and we are going to be going over the top of that eye once it completely sets with a little bit of eyeliner just to seal the deal. But I'm gonna go ahead and blend this under eye bit out now. And you can see how like that really makes it such a clean application.
And also by just putting a little bit lighter under the eye, it's really gonna open all of that up. And who doesn't want bigger, more doe-like eyes, right? compared to this side. Let's do the other eye. I have some coconut oil up in my hair right now because I'm deep conditioned on it. Yes. Put the other lash on. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Okay, where are my tweezers? I just had my damn tweezers. Hey, Google. Turn the volume up to 60%. <laughs> I love this song. Let the glue dry. Let the glue dry. We're going to put this on down. blend this side out now.
Okay, let's contour this a little tighter. While we wait to dry. these lashes are on I'm gonna go in with a little eyeshadow brush and push a little bit more powder into my crease of my eyes so the brush I really like for that it's my Roberts cosmetic brush and this is a e30 which this packs a lot of powder into this little brush and it pushes it you push the powder in um, so it's not like a regular blending brush this is more of a pigment brush where you push it in and then you could go and take a um, a blending brush and blend it out this is the naughty metal palette which you can get this at Sally's which you can tell I've used a lot of this I really like a lot of these colors I'm going to be using this one here, this red, and we're going to put a little bit of that on here, and then I'm going to show you the difference that this will make, too. Bam. Okay. Now I'm just setting what we blended out earlier with the powder. I'm going to come back with my angled brush that I used for the powder and I'm going to take what's left in the gel and just smoke out these bottoms. See how that side is smoky underneath? We're gonna do that same to that side. It just kind of blends out any of the little imperfections and it also makes the eyes look a lot bigger. My phone just dinged. Let me know that we're at 10%, guys. So if I randomly just cut out of the live, that's why. And then after we smoke out the bottoms like we just did, we're going to overline the tops again and make sure that it's a seamless blend. Thank you guys for hanging out with me though while I beat my face. See how we just went over that? Blend it in. Do the 
the same to the other side. Okay. And last, but definitely not least, what bindi are we going to wear today? I think I'm going to do one of these. Hey Google, turn the volume off. Alrighty, so this is my completed look, minus my hair because I haven't done that. But yeah, this is this is just kind of like an everyday kind of like uh, daytime dramatic eye, neutral lip, blended out, cleared up the complexion, uh, coal liner, powder brows. I did more of a kind of bronze shadow that goes out into a little bit more of I would say like a crimson and then smoked out the eyes. So um, yeah, that's my look and thanks for getting ready with me and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Brightest blessings. <laughs>